Hello everyone, I hope you are all well. I'm Gabriel Martins and today we are discussing the label practice initiation of IDD people. According to researchers, the period of transition from school to work life is a complex and challenging time. It's a time of heightened opportunities and new risks, which challenge the individual, the family and the services system. Famous have reported that commencing a transition focus in the last year of school is too late given the complexity of barriers young people with disability face when leaving school. Parents describe the time of finishing school as a cliff with little information provided about the options available to the young person which leads to short-term decision making. Work experience has been found to be the strongest predictor of gaining open employment for people with intellectual disability, and it is a critical part of any transition process. It both builds skills and knowledge of the young person, as well as builds expectations of parents and families. Then, the discussion about the labor practice initiation with pupils must begin as soon as possible, especially because there are many subjects to discuss and to work on with them. These are the subjects we will address today. The development of a clear view of skills and which tasks they might need some support with, reasonable accommodations, first day at a new job, stimulating and empowering them. Now, the first subject. It is important to these future workers to develop a clear view of their skills as well as which tasks they might need some support with. If pupils understand their disability, their personal strengths and limitations, they will be better prepared to think which jobs they are more able to do. Beyond that, what works they would like to do and what accommodations they would need to do it. So, how can we help pupils to get a clear view of their skills and find out tasks that they need some support with? The handbook A Guide to Success Job Seeking for People with Disabilities provided by California State University, gives us two great ideas. One among the ideas is to expose people to an amount of skill concepts to help them to find out whether they have each skill mentioned. These skills are divided into three large groups as follows technical skills, functional skills, and good worker skills. So within the technical skills group, we can see skills that may be developed in professionalizing courses for instance, cooking, pet grooming, manicuring, and musical instruments. Within the functional skills group, we can see skills that they could have developed at their home, such as classifying, copying, organizing, recording, caring for, and manipulating. And lastly, but not least, within the group of good worker skills, we can see what is good for every worker in every field of work, such as admit mistakes, accept supervision, be cheerful, friendly, and organized. The pupils might select skills that they feel most confident for each of the three groups, limited by five per group, and write what was or were the reason or reasons each one was chosen. The other suggested activity is to expose them to questionnaires with explained concepts. Ask them to decide whether this is a skill they have and furthermore, whether they would like to use it on a job. This is a suggested questionnaire. Don't worry about reading all these questions, this content will be available within the library of this topic. But there are skills such as working with fingers, checking accuracy, use of words and numbers, and seeing detail. Assessments in a controlled or semi-controlled work environment also give them the opportunity to try out specific tasks to help them to identify what they did and did not enjoy doing. Their answers will help them to understand, for instance, that lifting heavy boxes in a stock room will likely not to be a good fit if such disability limits the motor skills, but operations or logistics might be a better choice instead. Another subject to discuss here is reasonable accommodations. They need to be confident that it's not a problem to ask for it. Just remembering, a reasonable accommodation is a change in the work environment or in the way work is currently done that enable an individual to perform the essential functions of the job and enjoy equal employment opportunities. 
Reasonable accommodations take a variety of forms and can include flexible working arrangements, assistive technology, or an adaptation of the physical workplace. For instance, for IDD employees, reasonable accommodation could be managers prepared to make checklists for their tasks, mind maps to explain activities, documents with easy read formats, or to encourage someone to be available for any questions and listening to necessities of the IDD worker. In some cases, it could also be to provide special training to a group of employees that will be working with IDD workmates or the IDD employee.